Hello and welcome to the Third Rail. If you follow the channel you might have seen a couple of videos about a temporary Merklin layout I am currently working on. If you haven't I strongly recommend you watch the other videos in the series accessible via the little card at the top of the screen now. In the last episode I started the installation of catenary on the layout. We covered the Merklin catenary system and how to combine some of its elements in basic building blocks in order to make the installation process easier. I then proceeded to deploy these building blocks around the layout. In this episode I will be running a few checks and make a few adjustments where required in order to be able to run a few trains. As we could see in the last episode, the installation of the catenary system is not a particularly complicated affair. However, it requires a lot of pushing, pulling, lifting, bending, twisting and so on, which can lead to a build-up of tension along the wire. A bit of tension between two masts can lead to things shifting either in the area or further down the overhead line. This will of course require some readjustments over time. Now to avoid having to do too many of those, I usually leave the layout alone for a few days and allow everything to settle. This way I'll be able to identify obvious problem areas much easier and fix them once and once for all. So we are now a couple of days later and ready to embark on the next stage of this build. First I'll start with a quick short circuit check to make sure I have not moved something by accident. So I'll power the transformers up, turn the throttle up and wait for the transformer to trip. If there's any short somewhere that should happen now, but in this case it didn't happen, which is actually quite odd, but I won't complain about that. Any short would have had to be fixed at this stage as it's much more difficult to do this later. I also need a fully working track system for the next steps. I can then move on to the next step which is to perform a visual check on the layout during which I will be looking for bent or shifted masts. This would be an indication of some shifting here and there. So in this case, right opposite myself as I started to film, I noticed that there was one such occurrence in front of a signal. We can see that the mast on the right hand side is leaning to the right, so that would indicate that something is either pulling it or pushing it. In this case, if I look at the level crossing, I can see that the piece of track connected to it in the front has been dislodged. So that would indicate to me that there is a distance problem in the overhead wiring before the level crossing. Uh, that's probably too much of it, which means that it's pushing everything ahead of it to compensate. So I'll start by uh, loosening the catenary from the bend section ahead of the uh, leaning section. I then readjust the compensation bits in order to get everything back to an upright position and then I can shift my focus to the bent or curved section of track. Now at the beginning of the section of track I've got a few compensation bits which I should be able to adjust in order to give a bit more slack at the front and pull the wires back so that they fit a bit better. So I'll simply try and adjust the compensation bits, shift the masts a bit and then I can try and reattach everything. 
Now, unfortunately for me, uh, that didn't do the trick and I think I'm right at the end of the capabilities of the compensation bits. So I'm going to have to swap a bit of overhead wire for a shorter one and then uh, reattach things that have come loose in the process. Then adapt my compensation bits at the uh, beginning of the curved section so that everything shifts a bit forward. And then I should be back in business. I then repeated the process in a couple of areas around the layout that showed the same type of issues. Once this was done I was ready to move on to the next series of checks which has to do with the level of the catenary and its stability. For this I only need a pair of legs and a very specialized bit of tooling called a finger. I walk along the layout and follow the overhead wire, sliding my finger under it and applying a bit of upward pressure as a pantograph would do. Doing this allows me to ensure that there is a smooth transition between the numerous elements of catenary wire that are installed. I'll also be able to detect excessive play in the masts, which would indicate that their base is not fitted properly. If my finger gets caught under the wire attachment area, it means that one of the overhead wires is not attached properly to either the hook or the lever spring there. The wire needs to be reseated in this case. This will avoid the pantograph getting caught later on. The other area I pay particular attention to are the overhead wire connectors, which are a male-female connector system. First of all, I should feel a very smooth transition where these are present. Secondly, applying a bit of upward pressure underneath the connector should not lead to the catenary shifting up. Uh, if it does, like it does on the screen now, then there is a problem. It could be a simple case of loose connectors, meaning by this that they are not inserted far enough into each other. But another frequent issue is that the female connector is not gripping onto the male connector and needs adjusting. This is easily done with a pair of needle-nosed pliers. So it's easier to take the offending piece of wire off the mast to perform the adjustments. The clamp should be tight enough to prevent movement sideways and upwards with a bit of friction, but not so tight that it's impossible to insert something into it or to pull something out of it. So it might take a few tries. But uh, once that's adjusted, the uh, junction between connectors should be stable and will not move uh, when pushed by a pantograph. Then it's just a matter of carrying on with the same checks, fixing things as one goes along around the layout until we are back at the point we started from. So before we see a bit of pantograph action I need to do a first test drive with pantographs down. Why am I doing this? Well I install quite a few automatisms around the layout and as I've been shifting and putting things around a bit during the installation I just want to make sure that everything is still working as it should. So I'm going to run a uh, locomotive around the layout on every route and I'll check that the signals, the relays and so on are triggered the way they should be in the process. So I just railed the victim I identified at the end of the last episode for the tests, which is this uh, lovely 3050. It's an AE6-6 of the Swiss 
railways. You can see that the catenary makes railing more difficult suddenly. And once my railing is done, I'm ready to send the locomotive on a little journey. I'm going to give it a green signal. There we go. So I'm just sending the locomotive around a loop at ground level to start with. So apart from checking that the signals and turnouts are working properly in the process, I'll also check if the locomotive is not leaning to one side when going over the track. That could indicate that a mast is not set up properly. The base of the mast might not be inserted fully, or the track might not be inserted fully into one mast or the other. But that's not happening, so I'm ready to send the locomotive on a longer journey now. And I'll check for the same areas I'm interested in. So for the moment, no problem at all. And it's also a good way to check that you've not forgotten anything on the track, like a pair of pliers or a screwdriver, for example. Well, it's a good thing that the pantographs wear down, after all. So, no harm was done to the locomotive. I then carried on with my tests, which went smoothly. So I was ready for the next step. And we have finally reached the point where we can raise a few pantographs. And I say pantographs because I'll use the two pantographs during the testing. It's to test different angles of attack on the catenary system. What am I going to test for? I need to test for alignment of the catenary. I need to check the turnouts and I need to check the curves. For the turnouts, my test consists in running as slowly as possible over each area of the turnout and check that there is absolutely no movement in the catenary in the process. So, uh, I've checked the straight area of this turnout. I'm now going to check the curved bit. It's working fine in that direction, no movement at all. And we're going to go back in the other direction. It can be different. No, same thing, perfect. So having passed this first test with flying colors, we can follow the locomotive at this slow pace on the next section, which is a straight section of track. Now, usually on this type of sections, there are not too many problems to be expected, especially if the masts are spaced properly, then it's unlikely that uh, any deformation would be caused to the overhead wire that would lead to a pantograph getting caught. Yet, it's still worth checking. The next area to check are the curves. There we need to check the point at which the overhead wire makes contact with the pantograph. It should be towards the middle of the pantograph like it is now on screen. So if uh, you're doing the same and are in this shape, well done. Uh, I usually push the locomotive manually on those sections just to make sure that I'm aligned properly. Uh, if things are out of alignment, then it's a matter of bending the catenary wire into shape and maybe adjusting the position of one or the other mast. Once that's done, then it's just a matter of carrying on along the layout, performing the same type of checks where appropriate. So here we can see another turnout. Uh, this test went well. We can't see any movement in the overhead wire and the locomotive negotiates both sides of the turnout without any issue. So now let's have a look at how things look like when they go wrong. Here I have 
another turnout and we can see that there is a bit of jitter in the overhead wire. I'm going to bring the locomotive forward slowly a bit in a second and we're going to be able to see it from a bit closer. So the locomotive comes back and we can see that the overhead wire on the inner part of the turnout is pushed to the side by the pantograph. So what's happening here? Well, first of all we have our pantograph getting caught, of course, uh, so we need to disentangle it gently. Uh, the same thing occurs with the pot pantograph uh, at the back of the locomotive. So we have a difference in height probably between the two wire sections. So I'm checking the uh, attachments on the masts are fitted properly. They are steel, after all I just checked that then I'm going to try and check if I can't modify the geometry a bit to have a different spacing between the two pieces of wire, I mean the one on the inner side of the turnout and the one on the curve section. Then I'm going to move the locomotive manually, slowly on the curve section and I can still see a bit of movement on the straight overhead wire. So what I've done just now is not going to be very useful and I can see that the second pantograph also gets caught in that configuration. So I think I have another problem here. Mm, what is it? And I was the cause of the problem. I had decided to use a very long piece of overhead wire to cover the straight section of the turnout and the following track section. Now, these long pieces of wire, they are very flexible. So they are not stiff enough to resist to any sideways pressure from the pantograph as the one that occurs when the pantograph is driven over the curved section of the turnout. So I replaced this long piece of wire with the standard arrangement as advised from Merklin and everything is running smoothly now. No movement whatsoever. The pantograph simply slide from one piece of wire to the other without any issue. Another area where things can usually go wrong are curves, and here I'm taking an extreme example, which is a curve of a bridge section. Now, If we look at the locomotive, we can see as it goes past us that one of the pantograph is not making contact with the wire. If we look at this a bit more closely, we can see that actually both pantographs lose contact with the wire when they're going over that area. Additionally, on this bridge section, I've got an area at the end on one of the ramps where the wire is no longer in line with the center contacts. So I had a combination of a few problems there. First of all, on the area where the pantographs lost contact, one of the mast bases was bent. So I had to put it back into shape to get the line to the right height. Secondly, on the entire curve section, right down to the ramp, I had my combination of overhead wires completely wrong and I had to reconfigure the entire area. Once this was fixed, I tested the area again and we can see that the locomotive no longer loses contact to the overhead wire. This was the last area I needed to check, so I was ready for the next step, which consists in simply letting the locomotive go around the layout on its own for 10 minutes or so. This is yet another opportunity to pick up a few imperfections that might have been missed during the previous testing steps. But in this case, Everything went fine and after 10 minutes I was ready to go for the acid test. It consists in running the previous test but with a few coaches this time. And to add an additional level of checks I've added a coach which has a pantograph in this case. 
this is a good opportunity to check clearances. For example, a uh, bridge pillar might have been knocked out of place and a wagon might get caught in it on the way. But, fortunately for me, there also everything went very smoothly. So I can now safely say that my installation is complete. I think the layout looks a bit more grown up now as well, uh, which is quite nice. Right, we've come to the end of this video. Uh, if you have made it that far, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. It's very much appreciated. I've also noticed a uh, more rapid increase in the number of subscribers lately. Uh, it uh, never ceases to amaze me that people are so interested in the content that they give me a subscription. It's the notification bell and sometimes even give me a like. It's all very rewarding and keeps me going. Thank you very much for this again. And for now, bye and see you soon on the channel.